guys today I'm gonna do a really quick video I have to make up some of my uh, dewormer and what I top dress with all kinds of uh, different herbs and supplements for my dogs and since I'm out I thought well I'll quick make this video so you guys can uh, see how I do it and see all the ingredients and everything and you can use it for your dogs they're very, very healthy ever since I started doing this. I absolutely love it, and we'll get into it now. Okay, so I start with a base of diatomaceous earth and food-grade diatomaceous earth, and that's going to do the deworming. And then I just add all my ingredients to it so it's easy for just, you know, one scoop, and I'm not measuring out each little thing or anything. But, um, and I just top dress, like, if they have dry kibble or if I cook them chicken or whatever their dinner or breakfast is going to be, they just get this once a day, either sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the, you know, the evening, it just whenever. Um, but I start with diatomaceous earth and I'll put the ratios in the description box below. But, um, I, what I do is I add, and, and these supplements are kind of my steadies. But I always switch around a lot of supplements, and this is what I'm doing this time, because I feel that it's not good to take the same supplement, you know, for long periods of time. So, like in nature, animals would get, you know, different plants and fermented things if they, you know, the canine, if they, you know, kill something, they're going to eat whatever plants are inside that animal that they killed, you know, their ancestors. So, um... But I do start, and, and if you have a certain health ailment, it's good to do like a certain type of supplement or herb that you're wanting to use, you know, for a while. So I do that a lot too. But for the most part, like during flea season, garlic is pretty much always a standard in what I do. And then the brewer's yeast, and uh, we'll talk about that later because that's sometimes you don't want to use that if you have a yeasty dog. But let's go ahead and start. Um... I always, like I said, I add the garlic, and I am starting here with uh, five cups of diatomaceous earth. I'm, usually I use this container, which is what, the one that sits on my counter for my dogs, but I have nine dogs right now, and I'm going through this really fast, so I'm going to upgrade to this size, um, get these at Walmart, and I think they're about... I don't know. They're they're bigger, they're bigger than a half gallon. I don't think they'd hold a full gallon, um, but they do hold the five cups. So I'm gonna try that and see if that works. And then what I do is, um, I it's not my blend isn't an exact science. You know, it's just kind of like what I know I would use for my dogs. So I do two tablespoons of the garlic powder. I use an organic garlic powder. This is just like from, you know, what you'd get. Actually, I use it in my kitchen for my own cooking and everything. So it's just regular old organic garlic powder, not garlic salt. You don't want the, the garlic salt. And we'll put that in there. And then I always add a probiotic. Now, I, uh, you know, for my, my blend for my warmer that I sell on my website and in my Etsy shop, it, it doesn't have all this other stuff in it. I am thinking about making my favorite blend for everybody and then doing that because a lot of people have been asking and wanting that. But it does contain the probiotics. And I usually use a human grade, but for my dogs, um, this is a multi-species. And you can get this at like any farm store. You can get it on Amazon. And it's uh, just an awesome probiotic. And I use two scoops of the probiotic to the five cups. And it's, they're just getting a little bit every day. They're not getting like a full, you know, a dose. They're just getting a little bit every day and just top dressing everything. And to me, it really worked. Now this time around, um, I'm going to add Enzyme Miracle. And they don't usually get this, but Coco has had trouble digesting fats. This is just an amazing little added thing. I take a digestive enzyme all the time. It's just a bit bromelain and uh, protease, prolase, you know, just all the regular uh, digestive enzymes. So it's just great to help them digest all their food and everything. 
Now, I add a little bit of sea salt, pink Himalayan sea salt. Salt is not good for dogs, but in very small amounts, um, there are so many trace minerals in here that that is really good. So I just do one teaspoon of the sea salt, and that's more for flavor. Um, it does have all the minerals and stuff in there, so that's amazing for them, but they really like anything salty, just like we do. Okay, now the brewer's yeast is... I do this for fleas and ticks. It's got all the B vitamins. I mean, it's got a lot of other great benefits. If you can get B vitamins without using the yeast, that would be really probably better because a lot of dogs eat kibble and it's got grains and corn and soy and all that, which really makes a dog yeasty. If they're itching their paws and their ears are, if they're stinky and their ears are itchy and everything, your dog has an overgrowth of yeast. None of my dogs have that. So I do use the brewer's yeast, and I use two tablespoons of the brewer's yeast. I only, they're only on it through the summer months, pretty much. So it smells so good. Mm. And I mean, it's got a lot of health benefits, but you wouldn't want to feed it to a dog that's yeasty because it's just adding more yeast to their diet. So I do that. And then of course, turmeric. Oh, turmeric, everybody's got to know what. Uh, turmeric or however you say it, I'll call it turmeric, but that is such a great anti-inflammatory and um, and I do two full teaspoons. Now if your dog is on any kind of blood thinners or anything, this is a blood thinner. So any of these things, um, you'll want to run them by your vet if your dog is on you know, prescription meds or anything like that. You're going to want to um, make sure that your dog can have these kind of things because just because the herbs are natural doesn't mean they're completely safe. They can have all kinds of uh, side effects, you know, that, you know, won't do good. And same thing with the diatomaceous earth. If you give diatomaceous earth to your dog and it, they're on medication, it can uh, actually kind of like detox them from it. And so that it wouldn't work as well. Um, it doesn't seem to do that with all the natural herbs and stuff. Now, Icelandic kelp. Anybody that's been watching my channel knows how much I love Icelandic kelp for dogs. Um, it is high in iodine, so they only need like a pinch in their food every day. And um, a lot of times they just keep this in a container and at a pinch. But I've been on the go so much lately and so busy that I'm just going to add it in here. But they're just going to get... Um, it smells really fishy. I'm going to do three tablespoons, and that's going to give them about a pinch when you mix it in each day. And they're getting all their you know, phytonutrients, they're getting all their trace minerals and everything. And it's got an enzyme in here that eats away at plaque and um, is super, super, like ever since I started feeding it to my dogs, their teeth are uh, just amazing. I mean, Duke is like 12 years old, my great Pyrenees. And his teeth, he doesn't play ball, he doesn't chew bones, and he eats soft food all the time, and his teeth look really good. And healthy teeth is a healthy dog. There's no doubt about that. Same thing with humans. Um, now, my dogs are getting Paudiarco, P-A-U-D-R-A-C-O, three words, Paudiarco. It, um, this is something that I am constantly recommending um, in my Etsy shop, to, you know, people sending me messages all the time, uh, emails and everything. Um, it, if you have the yeasty dog <laughs> and their, you know, ears are bad and they're itching their paws, they have hot spots. Um, I mean, these could be seasonal allergies too, but 95% of the time it's yeast overgrowth, like the Candida albicus it, that we get in ourselves. Um, I mean, every yeast is wild occurring in the air continually. You can't stop that. Um, it's in a lot of everything that we eat. And, um, and yeast is a very natural, good, beneficial thing. But if the balance gets tipped too far and the yeast is starting to really take over the body, that's when you need to combat it a little bit. And Patiarco is one of my go-to at curing a yeasty dog. Um, I have a video on that that I made years ago. It's not probably very good. 
but um, I need to make another video just on Patiarco and using that because a lot of people, you know, that my dog's ears are so bad and they're, you know, this, that, and the other. And even if it's mites, they still have a yeast infection in their ear. They, they get yeast uh, and yeast on their paws. Um, and you can smell that smell of a dog's paw that smells, I mean, they're going to always smell like a Frito chip. <laughs> but, uh, and I really do like that smell. But if it's really strong, Frito-y smelling, they, they're, they're tipping that scale on the yeasty side. Um, and Patty Arco really, for humans even, for the, like a Candida cleanse, this is amazing. Like drinking the tea and everything. And it's super safe for all animals and humans and everything. I just wouldn't want to stay on it for very long. Once you've, you know, kind of done what you need to do, you can go off it for a while and then just use it here and there. But I just add it to my dog's one teaspoon just occasionally. You know, like we do it like once a month. We'll have, a, you know, or I mean once a, a thing like this and then do it like three months without doing it and then do it again. And now, if I had a yeasty dog or something, I would have them on it for quite a while until I saw started seeing results for that. And then, um, that's kelp powder. And um, I'm not going to add the kelp powder, but you can get this in the granules. And you can get it in just a powder form. And I had originally bought this because it has that enzyme. I originally bought the powder to put in my tooth powders for us, for humans. <laughs> it can't be done. You can't get past the fish flavor. So I don't know. I mean, I wish there was a way. I tried to like really put a heavy peppermint and have heavy spearmint flavor to it, and it's it's horrible to brush your teeth with fish. But it's amazing for your teeth, you know. So I wish that I could I could change that. So I'm going to be using that up with my dogs. But for now, we're just using my favorite, which is the granules. And then uh, something they always get all the time, which is a great adaptogen. Uh, it, it, it's great for oxidative stress on your dog. It's also like, it, it, it's a mood elevator, or not an elevator, but it's a mood uh, regulator. It just makes you, uh, humans, for depression and all kinds of stuff, it makes you a very even kill, you know, uh, mental state and everything. So it's really great for dogs that way, and it's super safe. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of that. Now remember this is, you know, I'm just going to give my dogs, um, I'm going to give my dogs a half a heaping teaspoon every day in their food. You know, so they're, they're not getting a whole lot of, of one thing in here. Um, if I had a spe special ailment, I would do that. Um, that's the patty arc. All right, so just a messy job no matter how you look at it. Now, like I said, I will switch around and use other supplements. Um, I've been looking at using ginkgo biloba for my older dogs. Um, it's great for brain health for dogs. I noticed like cognitive uh, dysfunction in older dogs is a, a very real thing. Um, here's some dry kibble. I'm just kind of what I'm going to do for um, like pearl and a scarlet and and roxy and everything there are about 50 pound dogs um scarlet might be like 40 pounds she's real short little schnauzer but she's really built um and you know roxy they're they're all right around 50 pounds so i'm going to use um a half a teaspoon but i don't level it off like that i just kind of do heaping like that and that's all they get and then i add some water which they have that anyway. And uh, a lot of times if they have dry kibble like this, because I have nine dogs, I can't, I do cook for them all the time, but I mean, they're starving, you know, they need to eat. And so kibble is like, just, it's handy. And I wish I could make my own kibble. And um, the kibble that I use, I'll put down in the, I've been feeding my dogs this kibble for a lot of like years. And I absolutely love it. Um, it's grain free. It went up like 20 something dollars just in the last three weeks. So that's yeah, crazy. Um, I am going to look into making, that's why I supplement so much too, is because 
they don't get everything that they need, even though the kibble's got a lot of great stuff in it and everything, but this stuff is really important and it's I've noticed just a major change in the health of my dogs in these past five, six years. Um, this is the healthiest batch of dogs I've had in years and um, they're, they're all doing really good and their teeth are really good. They have a lot of, in fact, they have way too much energy. It, it's bizarre uh, how much energy they have. <laughs> but um, I usually crack a, a raw egg on top of this and that's what they'll have for breakfast a lot of times. It's just a small amount of kibble with their supplement. It smells good. They actually like, it makes like a gravy and they don't mind, nothing in here is bitter or has a bad taste. The brewer's yeast is actually really tasty. The turmeric is tasty and the garlic. And this is fishy, so they like that. Uh, the ashwagandha is, uh, it's actually very, very tasty. Uh, Patty arc is a little bitter, but it's not horrible. The probiotics are good. The sea salt, I mean, so everything tastes good. Nobody, I don't ever have any trouble with anybody not liking this blend. And then, and then they're getting the diatomaceous earth, which is gonna just do a little deworming and cleanse their colon out, help them absorb all their minerals and their nutrients and everything. When everything, you know, the whole digestive tract is nice and clean, everything can uh, absorb their nutrients better. That is a really, really good plus. Now, another thing I'm gonna be doing, um, which I, I haven't done yet, but I have a girlfriend who has, there she grows microgreens, and here she's local. And um, anyways, I had her dehydrate a big tray of dun pea, and I had researched all the, the nutrients in the dun pea, which is just amazing. And um, anyway, she did a crazy job at dehydrating these, and they smell amazing. And I'm not eating this like eating pay. But anyways, I am going to grind these down in a Vitamix or something, you know, a, a, a good blender that's really gonna, uh, I can't quite get them to a fine powder, but they get ground down. And I'm gonna start adding that into my blend and see if I can get my dogs to, I mean, they already like the microgreens and I feed it to them all the time. But this is quick and easy. I can always have it done. I don't have to worry about storing them in the fridge and if they're going bad and, and then dosing them out each one and everything. And these hold with, uh, freeze dried would probably be even better if we could freeze dry them. But for now, they're still, they're still so bright green and they smell so good. I know that they're holding a lot of their nutrients and everything. So that's something I'm gonna look into. Um, she also did me I think she's got red clover, broccoli, and like I said, I, I a lot of times my dogs will have a cracked egg and then I'll throw some microgreens on there or whatever. And I've done sprouts too. But um, in fact, we just did a Facebook uh, class on doing sprouts and we talked about how to use them and doing them for the pets as well. So that was a lot of fun. But um, in this day and age, I really believe that we have to add stuff for our pets to keep them healthy and do a lot of detoxing all the time and everything and um, just, you know, really doing a lot of natural stuff to keep them healthy. And at least that's what's been working for me. But of course you need to talk to your vet if your pets are on any kind of medication or if you have any questions, seniors that have any health issues and stuff, um, you'll definitely wanna write all this down and run it by your vet and see uh, I know a lot of vets will probably be okay with it, but some of them get a little weird, you know, and they, I mean, it, it, like you don't want to be taking turmeric if you're on blood thinners because that will thin your blood. There's a lot of things that do that. And um, I know like the Patty Arco and um, stuff like that is very, very safe, ashwagandha is safe. And uh, the, the kelp is high in iodine and it really affects your thyroid and the dog's thyroid and you don't want to overdose them at all, ever. So just a pinch, if you're using this for their teeth and gums and stuff, um, you don't want to overdose them at all on, uh, on the kelp because it's so high in iodine. But that's all I have today. Um, I'm gonna do another one for my cats because I make a whole nother blend for my cats and a um, little different. Um, stuff in there for the cats and I add that I have a 17 year old cat 
who's very healthy. Um, she's just recently had some little issues here and there, and I'm doing some homeopathic stuff with her. And I have another older cat, Raven, that's, um, you know, she's had some of that stomach stomatitis or whatever and I ordered some homeopathic uh, pills which have completely cleared it up and um, I've got her you know doing that because their cat foods no matter how you look at it are not very good and it's hard cooking for a cat even though Winifred who's 17 she has been eating the cooked dog food and human food for many many years she loves everything she's like a, a garbage disposal and she's eaten a lot of garlic in her life, and she's a pretty healthy little girl. So I do think that that's a lot of that from eating all that good food and everything. And and we can grow barley and uh, catnip and you know cat grass and stuff like that for uh, wheat grass for the cats. And boy, dehydrating wheat grass and uh, you know grinding that up and putting it in the cat food would probably be really appetizing to them and give them a ton of health benefits too so i'll be doing that that's going to be a whole nother video anyways we're going to go and i will talk to you later everything will be in the description box below and um i've got a video coming real soon to meet it's going to be a meet and greet of each one of my dogs um i don't know really i have to figure out how i'm going to do that because it's really hard to get everybody together and uh, I can't do that. I'm going to have to take each dog and introduce you and everything because they just get so crazy hyper, you know, running around playing ball and, and all that. But anyways, we'll talk to you later. I'm going to go find somebody to eat this. See you later. Bye.